back, baby. And you know who's not back? A lot of running backs. They got injured this week. We're going to talk about which ones to pick up, who you could be confident in, who's got a good schedule, who should you spend all of that fab, burn that priority on, and who is a trap. Check it out. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and enjoy the show. Foot Clan, do you have an account with Coinbase? Are yeah. You, you think about opening one? Do you have any Bitcoin, yeah. Ethereum, other crypto? Check this out. With an Alto Crypto IRA, you can trade crypto like Bitcoin and avoid or defer the taxes. I that, don't like taxes. That's what it's all about. You invest because you're trying like you're trying to build that wealth and you're trying to avoid or defer the taxes and Alto IRA is helping you do that. Alto I uh, Alto's crypto IRA is the easy way to get into crypto. And look, you can trade all you want without the tax headache. Create an account in just a few minutes. Invest with as little as $10. No setup charges. Secure trading 24-7 through Alto's integration with Coinbase. 80-plus coins available. We're talking Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano. You want some sushi swap with your Bitcoin? No problem, because Alto has that covered. Industry-leading security. Multiple ways to fund your account. So check this out. Are you ready to take your investments to the next level? Diversify like the pros and trade without tax headaches. Open an Alto Crypto IRA with as little as $10. Just go to altoira.com slash footballers. That's A-L-T-O-I-R-A.com slash footballers. Start investing in cryptocurrency today. Go to altoira.com slash footballers. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, November 30th, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway back with you for a waiver show as I wave goodbye to my running backs. Well, lucky for you, there's actually some running backs available. What if I have no fab? Then I there's, hope there's, you are high in a waiver <laughs> priority system. They're still there. They're still available. Christian McCaffrey, Jason. Mm, yeah. Uh, we had a podcast yesterday that was already depressing at, in, at, at times. I mean, the, the show was good. I listened. I mean, it, was a, it was a great show, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. But um, we were already hurting, and this was with the thought that maybe McCaffrey would come back after the bye. Uh, a few hours after the show release, we were uh, greeted with a blah. Mm-hmm. And, I've, it, and I've, it said, uh, no more Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, I've been there. Um, I've lived that life. For the last uh, two years, I was. Is it okay to say that I was thrilled in the in the moment that I didn't have to deal with this on a personal level this yeah, year? That, like it's okay. To I've say dealt that. with it over and over, and finally, I get the news that Christian mm -hmm. McCaffrey's out, and I said, "You can't hurt me anymore because I traded you away. This, you can only hurt Andy now." There is an irony, or in our league of record, Mike. Yeah. Um, there is a weird irony to the fact that. I had Derrick Henry in our league of record. Mm -hmm. He was injured. So then I used him to acquire Dalvin Cook. To acquire Dalvin Cook, well, I only got him because Mike sent Dalvin Cook to Jason for Christian McCaffrey. That's right. And now all three of these <laughs> these running backs are equivalent. They're we identical. Did, we did a triangle swap for nothing. For nothing. But welcome back, Jason. Welcome back yeah, to the show. It's good we, to be back. We missed you. Um, we've got waivers on today's episode. Oh, do we? We'll try to get you prepped up. Fantasy playoffs are two weeks away. Um, hashtag dinner butter winners. We've hmm. got the Megalodon giveaway winners. You've all been notified. And uh, <laughs> the Debo Samuel jersey went to somebody named Goop. Congratulations to Goop. There it is. <laughs> Usernames are fun, right? Stefan Diggs signed jersey to Dr. Shoe. Oh, probably a friend of Dr. Schultz. Yeah. One, would, yeah one goes in the other. Uh, <laughs> Schultz, Schultz goes in the shoes? Yeah. Uh, Hollywood Brown signed Cleet, went to Edgar Gonzalez. Congratulations. And a $100 shopballers.com gift card to Ruskin Gallardo. So congratulations to everybody who tweeted dinner butter and got it trending on Twitter, and that was hilarious. 
because those that that hashtag has never existed before. No, it has not. Uh, but now the precedent has been set, ladies and gentlemen. Next year, Thanksgiving is going down. Yeah, Thanksgiving when when the megalodon comes out and you find that hashtag, we are getting it trending. How do we and we're going to butter one. again? Well, maybe we will. Maybe I, we will. I don't know. Maybe we'll do Thanksgivings. And <laughs> that, oh. that way we can actually succeed. Was that Thanksgiving with a Z? Sure, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Now my mind is going. <laughs> we had a Monday night football game. Oh, you're darn right we did. And look, I understand that probably... 90 plus percent of the general public watched that game and just wanted to rip their eyeballs out, but not me. No. That game was sensational. Uh, I am an unabashed, diehard Arizona Cardinals fan. So watching just the absolute collapse of the Seattle Seahawks, it brought me great joy. And I'm not sorry about that. And then on the other side of the football. Clearly, foot, you on, lead the show with it. On the other side of the football, it was Antonio Gibson domination. And so this was just this was a fantastic game for me personally. How did you guys do feel we, about it? Do we have an update on JD McKissick's injury? That part was sad. We're like JD McKissick had a, a monster game. He was playing well. Two touchdowns. Stealing all the touchdowns. I was very excited to come in here and do the goblin laugh and, you know, just have a good fantasy football joke but I don't, he did go down with a, one of those injuries where you're like oh n- hope he's okay oh no like he did a almost seemed like he was doing a uh, a limb check making sure he could still move them all he got carted off didn't have to get on the board so it seems like you know no massive injury to mr mckissick uh but i don't think we have an update yet yep took a knee to the head and uh we'll see how that ends up but obviously if he misses time Passing game work is going to be Antonio Gibson's as well, and it'll be a, a test of volume versus physical health yeah. for Antonio Gibson. Can he stay upright? I mean, he had – Antonio Gibson had 29 carries and seven receptions, complete uh, dominating performance yes. for someone that didn't get a touchdown. Um, and as good as he was was how bad Russell Wilson was. Oh, On a football level, Russ ended up with two touchdowns. Uh, for fantasy, probably didn't – destroy you but um he's not right you know what I mean like just flat I've been saying uh since that first week back do not play Russ wait until after he looks right because he looks so bad can't make passes um it just, can't make them can't he, build them he, he does he does can't not fabricate create any passes anymore uh, uh what does it mean for Metcalf because Metcalf uh, had- one for 13 is what it means yeah, I mean, Tyler Lockett, three for 96. Metcalf had basically no targets until the second half. Had no, one, he had zero until the second half. One catch on the final drive of the game for 13 yards. This is the first stretch of his entire career where I think he's gone multiple games without 50 yards receiving. It, it is not what you expected when Russ came back. It was kind of hold, serve. And then wait for Russ to get back, and then Metcalf will continue. I mean, this was a, the wide receiver five through the first half of the year. What's ironic is that when Russ was supposed to be back would have been this coming week. Like the, the timeline of the injury when it first got reported and the expectation was that, you know, he would have missed all these games, and it turned out he did. It turned out that he did miss all of these games from – you know, from the standpoint of being a DK Metcalf manager, but going forward, I mean, I, I you're you're going to still start him. Um, yeah. Obviously, we know he can get it done with bad quarterback play. Lockett had a good game. I think you just you have to hope Russ gets better. The, to me, the bigger question was, I mean, there was still tons of uh, those errant throws where you're like, Russell Wilson's hand is not okay, but. How do you go that long without just forcing a target to DK Metcalf? Well, like, there, there's it's, a lot it's, wrong. It's insane that you're not uh, – lock it, Metcalf, 1A, 1B. You can have the conversation, but, I mean, most people would say that Metcalf is the, is the true number one on this team. How do you not scheme something up to get him a target? 
There were 10 combined rushing attempts by Alex Collins and DJ Dallas that accounted for 18 total yards. So when you don't have any rushing game whatsoever, that you saw the pocket collapse repeatedly. There was no time. There's no play action. Like without Chris Carson, that hurts you too. Like it's just there's a lot wrong with the team right now. You look and you try to find opportunities at running back, right? You got injuries. Oh, let's go find something in Seattle. Maybe you shouldn't. I mean, there there's nothing there. And if the floor is seven for fourteen for their leading rusher, it's scary stuff. So uh, not good in Seattle. We'll see how things evolve. Maybe Russ needs to get healthier. Maybe that's all it is. Maybe it's just health and that's it. It was good to see Logan Thomas back on the field. He only ended up three for 31. Uh, had a touchdown. Had a, back. What, what was your guys read on the touchdown? Incomplete. Uh, that's how I saw it too, but it was, ex it was very, very close to the point of I had, I didn't know if yeah. like they were going to overturn. I really didn't have a, a beat on it, but that could have gone through. And then you're talking four for whatever and a, and a score and a great game for Logan Thomas. So he remains a uh, potential tight end uh, savior for the teams that are struggling. On a waiver show today, it might yeah. actually have been the best thing that could have happened to you was yes, the sure. incomplete because the competition for him may not be there. So let's move on. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. I just want to say where there was smoke, there was fire on Thanksgiving. Cause I, <laughs> uh, I did the we did the brisket. And, yep. Oh gosh. Turned out well. It turned out ten out of ten. Wow. Uh, we were just now, Mike. Yeah. Mine was very good as well. Awesome. Yeah, we had a, we had a good time. Uh, Thanksgiving may have been forever altered by this decision it's now a barbecue it might be <laughs> uh all right so smoke fire today we thought we would tackle the entire patriots passing game this is a team scoring a ton of points they've won six straight games they're the number two seed in the afc and they've averaged 35 points a game in that streak so uh rather than just focus on kendrick Bourne or, or mac jones let's talk about all of them Let's talk about Jacoby Myers, who's been in the top 24 twice in the past three weeks, averaging 7.5 targets a game. Kendrick Bourne has been hyper-efficient, even though he's not on the field as much. He finds a way to score, oftentimes tiptoeing down the sideline. How are we – and and Mac Jones, two games in the top 10 in the last three weeks. He looks so good. I mean, this team has come together in a huge way. And, with you know, we were talking before the show – you know, Buffalo and the Rams, they looked like, you know, monster contenders just weeks ago. And now Buffalo is behind New England in the division. They look like they have some some cracks in the armor. How are we feeling about this passer game, passing game from a fantasy perspective and starting these players? Yeah, I, so I, I think that the Patriots, uh, their passing game is fire, that it's real. If we're talking NFL, uh, Mac Jones is legit. This is not just smoke, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about fantasy. Can you rely on them? Can you get enough fantasy points to confidently plug these players into your lineup? And on that, I think it's just smoke. I don't think that there is enough reliability here. You, you just kind of illustrated when describing Kendrick Bourne, we say somehow, some way keeps getting it done, keeps being efficient enough, scores a touchdown here or there on special teams, just does something to have a fantasy relevant day. And those things just aren't enough to keep happening forever. You don't just keep getting crazy efficiency um, over and over. They've got Buffalo this coming week and then a bye week. So the next two games, I'm not going to play any of them. Um, coming back against Indianapolis, I mean, if they torch Buffalo – against what I believe they'll do, then sure, maybe I'll plug them in. But for me, and I'm I'm talking up and down the lineup, uh, Kendrick Bourne, Jacoby Myers, who's got more targets, more snaps, um, and Hunter Henry, like he's the one where maybe I would throw him in, but that's only because he's a tight end and you might be in tight end purgatory. But I believe there are better wide receivers, better quarterbacks to be played for fantasy than the Patriots. And I, I think the Hunter Henry thing – may have been a bit of smoke when it was happening too. You had Johnny Smith missing some games during that stretch of touchdowns. You've seen his involvement improve. Mac Jones is great because he takes what the defense gives him. 
And now you might be hesitant to have played any of these players this week against Buffalo, but remember Buffalo's lost Tredavious White for the mm-hmm. year now. Yes. Like there are problems there. I do tend to agree with most of what Jason said there, though, where it's hard to ignore the end of day numbers with Kendrick Bourne. But Mike, you were right here on the show bringing up ignoring the numbers for Kenyon Drake at one point in time. And I'm not saying they're an identical comparison, but just finishing a week with a good fantasy finish does not always mean that it's going to be prescriptive when the external metrics don't stack up. Like is it is it if you had to choose Bourne or Myers rest of the year? I would go with Bourne. Uh the target share has gone up over the last, you know, five weeks or so. Uh, it was, Bourne was kind of the, like they, they gave Nelson Aguilar all the money, right? Jacoby Myers was already established and then they brought in Kendrick Bourne. He was kind of their next option. And that was after the giving, giving, uh, Henry and Smith huge contracts for the tight end. Did you mention Nelson Aguilar? Yeah. yeah. He was, he was their primary guy that they went after. So I think it has taken some time for the, the play of Kendrick Bourne to earn him that time on the field. While his snaps, he's still about a, a half-time uh, player. The targets are going up, and he can hit on the big play. Where Jacoby Myers, he finally came through with a with an actual good PPR game this past week. But before that, it had been a very, very long time aside from a uh, his touchdown from a backup quarterback in garbage time. So I'm I'm still good moving forward with uh, with Kendrick Bourne as a flex upside play because I know that he can he he's one of those one reception type of players uh but I'm not I'm not starting Mac Jones in his first game against the Buffalo Bills that's Cam on the road. or Mac oh gross I guess Cam's on by yeah, so you get a, yeah. you get a pass there but but I, rest I, of season uh, you have to lock one in maybe you had rust and you need to pivot I mean rest of season you would oh I love it. It was started to say you would have to. You, you have to go Mac Jones because Cam Newton played atrocious and got benched in his second start. Yeah. Like Cam Newton, it, he said, I'm back, but he might be back on the bench. He actually was saying, I'm bad. <laughs> oh, oh, that, I don't know if you, you oh. read, if you read lips, you actually say, I'm bad. Oh, yeah, that is what yeah. he said. What if, <laughs> does Cam Newton need to pull a Logan Thomas? Go cut, go tight end? Yeah. Too late. <laughs> too late. That would be the Tebow path. A little too late. Uh, that was where there's smoke, there's fire, presented by our friends at Traeger Grills. Grilling season never ends with Traeger. Go to Traeger.com slash footballers. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Well, yeah, I mean, Christian McCaffrey was the headline, placed on injured reserve, um, History is repeating itself. Uh, we talked on the show yesterday. I'm sure you heard it, Jason, about the debate at the top of the draft for next fantasy season where I think Jonathan Taylor does look like the, the odds on favorite right now. Um, I think Derrick Henry, if he makes a return, because they'll make the playoffs probably, um, if he makes any return at all that might you know, quell some of the concerns about the injury. He might go number two. Yeah, if he finishes the season healthy, right? then yes. And then, um, you know, McCaffrey's in the mix, and then you're going to have, you know, Dalvin Cook, another injury for Dalvin Cook with, with problematic shoulders. Eckler's in the mix as well, mm-hmm. but... Najee. Yeah. yeah, Najee. So, although quarterback there, who knows? Um, probably doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> who cares? Um, it's, it's who rough. knows? Who cares? But the story for Christian McCaffrey now is not just... Can he be healthy? It's actually, can the team do what they did with him anymore? Because if you're healthy, yeah, he may be healthy the rest of his career. It might not, like the damage might be done to the workload. Like they might say after two years of this, we have to draft or invest on a platoon backfield because we can't keep him healthy. Yeah, and without him, they're dying. I mean, they're just yeah, they're not yeah. the same team. Yeah, it, it is wild. I mean, I, I think for fantasy purposes, it's going to be mostly irrelevant in the sense that if you do change Christian McCaffrey from a 99% snap player to a 70, 65% snap player, he'll still be one of the best fantasy running backs in, in the game. It's just a matter of 
When is he going to be out there? When is he going to be healthy? And I mean, do you think I, he I, ends up a top three pick next year. I do. Okay. I, I, I tend to lean that way as well. Uh, Dalvin Cook expected to miss at least the next two weeks. I would say this was a better than expected result from yes. uh, he's had this injury. I mean, I think that that is helpful in knowing that he did come back out on the field. Now, how effective he is, how much they, you know, he's missing out on a juicy matchup this week. I mean, they played Detroit and it was, I mean, Madison's going to eat, uh, but he could be back in he, week 15 for the fantasy playoffs. He could. It will be. What a tough decision for fantasy players if, yes, he, if he's active. It'll be extremely tough, and it'll be tough for the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, they re there was the report that his other shoulder was already hurt, right? Am yeah, I torn labrum in the other shoulder yeah. already. So, I mean, if you have these multiple shoulder injuries, how do you give this guy 20 touches a game? And how do you like? How do you feature him in a passing game where you gotta like, yeah, get he, your arms up over your head? He can't even get the cereal box down from the top <laughs> right. right now. So it, he should. It's it's really tough. This was an injury that we always knew um, coming in had a twenty yeah. percent chance of being reaggravated at some point. Well, that point has come. So um, I do think if he's active, week fifteen, week six, whenever he's active, uh, you're gonna start him. And on top of that, the, the they're gonna win. That's that's what needs to happen. They're going to win. Like if the Minnesota Vikings lose these next two weeks, they could be you out of the shelve them. They're not going to lose to Detroit, and I don't think they lose to Pittsburgh at home. So I do think that there's a, a decent chance. And you know Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer is oh he's playing for his job. He's playing for a jo his job. And and this is a team that has been very stubborn with Dalvin Cook. And Cook has been tough when he's come back. So I I would just I'd consider this to be optimistic news that you may see more of him this year and he may make an impact at the end of the year sure Debo Samuel ah. uh, after 12 weeks he's finally going to miss a couple uh, groin injury he's going to miss one to two weeks for the resurgent 49ers and we'll see if they stay that way without him yeah. obviously it's a waiver show um, but his backup is going to be awesome uh, but I think Elijah Mitchell is already rostered in most leagues oh uh, his yeah. bet okay yeah, yeah, yeah. you make it a joke I got you. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, it's funny yeah thank you, thank you. Is that, do you work on I'll that on here. the four-day weekend day. oh yeah uh, I, that's why i missed yesterday's show i was really uh constructing spicing it. that up i had speculated that maybe it was because you lost in the DraftKings competition and you'll be getting oh, the shame dude, this week my DraftKings lineup they knew i was on holiday <laughs> they're like yeah we're not showing up either and i barely beat you Barely. That's embarrassing. We went. We, we went into the afternoon. I, I know you were with the family, and you guys, you guys had a trip. We went into the afternoon where it was Jared Cook versus Beckham, and Mike sends me a message and says Jared Cook just caught a touchdown, and I'm like, this can't. I just lost my running backs. I can't get the shame this week. <laughs> and mercifully, Odell caught a bomb like five seconds later. I did follow that. Yeah. I did. It was a lot of fun. Um. Okay, well, Dan Campbell came out and said it's hard to say that you'd see DeAndre Swift playing against the Vikings. Yeah, the, he went out on Thanksgiving. Unfortunately, the shoulder injury has been classified as day-to-day. -day, so he'll probably miss the one week and be back would be my expectation. Yeah, I mean, head coach saying it's hard to see him out yeah. there. Um, Jamal Williams. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wish we could still trade. You could you could trade him to me, Mike. Uh, Rick, Rick Basaccia said... Darren Waller, week to week. He's not been ruled out, but I'd be making plans. Yep. Daryl Henderson, quad strain, his weekly injury. Um, maybe limited in practice. Sonny Michelle should be ready to go. Yeah, this one seems a little bit more severe. I, I, I think he'll miss a week. Sore ankle for Jalen Hurts. He will play. So you'll probably okay. be playing him against the Jets. Yes, you will. Uh, the Saints are going to make a quarterback change. Taysom Hill taking first team reps. Uh, full protest, full participant in practice on Monday after the foot injury. He just needed to lock up the contract first. Yeah, he pulled pulled a Camara. That this team has no offense right now, so they had to do something. They're about to get some. Alvin Camara limited in practice, but was out there. Mark Ingram full participant. Uh, reinforcements at the running back position could be an interesting game against the Cowboys. And much was made about Zeke and potentially getting time off. <laughs> Jerry Jones says no. Jerry Jones said, quote, 
And his I quote, am quoting quote. Jerry Jones. Zeke will have a serious load. Sounds like my post Thanksgiving situation <laughs> uh, on Thursday night against New Orleans. So we got a Thursday night game. That's a blessing. I mean, if there was a, if there was going to be a sure. week off, you'd know ahead of time. My chair just shrunk like two inches <laughs> while I'm in the middle of talking. Was that because of the serious load? Yeah. yeah thank you, Mike. <laughs> CD Lamb, full participant in practice. Amari Cooper did not practice. They expect him to be back. Oh, really? So all the reinforcements are coming for Thursday. Yeah, CD and Cooper being back is huge for Dak, huge for the Cowboys. I am not going to overreact to Jerry Jones uh, saying the, talking about the workload for Ezekiel Elliott. I think that – Although Zeke did uh, – I'll just add to it. Zeke came out and said not one person's approached him about taking time off, and he said he's okay. Yeah, I mean, if, if you – you know, you look at this, the stats and the snap counts and the usage, I feel like they are going to have it be more of a timeshare this week. Will it impact your, your... I mean, I'm not going to bench Zeke, but I'm certainly not going to pay up for him in a DFS lineup or expect um, huge things. And it, and it would um, impact my uh, willingness to start Tony Pollard. All right, that was today's... New yeah, that makes sense. You you can feel comfortable putting him in there. Sure. Um We'll talk more about that in the matchup preview, which will come tomorrow for the Thursday game. That was today's news and notes presented by our friends at Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download Sleeper, join the breaking alerts channel is faster than every other source. And before we get into the waivers, I want to thank today's sponsors, Head and Shoulders. Scalp Shield technology is never not working Woo! to give you up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Uh, we have obviously been doing never not working this entire season and, um, crushing it. Obviously our segments on Thursday have helped a lot of people. I'm not saying what we're going to do this week, but last week we looked at the contract situation of these players getting out ahead of things. Is there, can we do a never not working where we say who's going to get injured? Are we able to, can we do that? We can could that would be incredible could we do one where we like magically recover them from injury and put them back on your roster we, either one yeah. of those yeah we we could but i mean that'll blow our cover that would that, yeah of magicians <laughs> um yeah you know what else is magic head and shoulders oh, uh regular head and shoulder scalp shield technology provides continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff itch and dryness renewing your protection with every wash you can get up to 100 percent dandruff protection that's never not working with head and shoulders scalp shield technology available at walmart.com uh and speaking of serious loads i checked my front porch and there was a serious box of Omaha steaks sitting there. Oh baby. And then I combine that with the uh the Traeger and, yeah. and magic happens. Um I'm on a full meat diet. That's this one. Oh, you went full carnivore? I went full carnivore just by the amount of meat that was surrounding mm. me. Um Omaha I would add caramel apple tartlets to your meat. Uh oh, just like me mix, personally. Mix them in or be like separately? a carnivore that also eats caramel apple tartlets. That that's the Omaha steaks diet. That's well, right. Look, even a tiger likes a good dessert. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and we are t tigers. <laughs> I don't know. Um, look, you you've heard us talk about Omaha steaks. This is the best time of year, um, because finding a good gift for people is tricky, and gift cards that's not a great gift. Um, Omaha steaks makes it easy for you to send family and friends an unforgettable gift that they're guaranteed to love. You can go to omahasteaks.com. You enter the code footballers in the search bar, and they have what's called the perfect gift package. And for $99.99, you get 24 entrees, uh, bacon wrap, filet mignons, chicken breast, size desserts, um, like those caramel apple tartlets. Mm. When you use the code footballers, you'll also get an additional eight Omaha Steaks burgers for free with your order. Um We've all heard about those shortages and shipping delays, so do not wait. Order the perfect gift gift package today at omahasteaks.com. Get eight free burgers by entering the code FOOTBALLERS. Achieve gifting greatness with Omaha Steaks. Incredible flavor, incredible value, 100% guaranteed. omahasteaks.com, keyword FOOTBALLERS. Put me in, coach. All right, Cardinals, Chiefs returning from the bye. We... Uh, yeah, but it's week 13, so we should probably send four teams on to buy. Let's do it, Mike. The Browns, the Packers, the Titans, the Panthers. What are we doing? No surgery for Rodgers, by the way. 
but he does want to make a lot of this injury publicly. He yeah. wants a lot to be known about how serious it is. Oh, he's he's just so tough. He's fighting he's through so it. He's so tough. Um, he's a tough guy. He's a tough guy. <laughs> Long hair. Um, Browns, Packers, Titans, Panthers on by. Two weeks till the fantasy playoffs. There's a lot to consider with your ad drop considerations here. Um, do you need a pickup for this week? Do you need one for playoff weeks? Are you stashing backup running backs because your team is set? Are you looking at future matchups? I'll give you an example. One of the greatest delights of my life is receiving a, a, a DM from Al Borland saying something like, curse you, you took my defense. And I did that this week. I picked up the Colts last week who have Houston, and um, I'm facing Al Borland this week for the bye week in our league of records. So um, don't be an Al. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Good advice there, Mr. Borland? I guess. <laughs> I, I put a healthy bid on it. I was really surprised you got the D. I bid zero. He did. <laughs> um. All right. We're looking at wide receiver. Why did receiver pickups? Now you said that uh, you said that you picked up the Colts because they're playing Houston. Yeah, and is T. Y. Hilton active? He is active, and he scored last week. Um, Little uh, oh, appetizer. Uh, T. Y. Uh. Houston, <laughs> we have a problem. <laughs> if you need a start this week, there's you, your guy. Let me let me ask you because I am actually facing this decision in a league. I have T. Y. Houston. Got Marvin Jones, got Emmanuel mm -hmm. Sanders, mm -hmm. AJ Green. Mm -hmm. Are you really? Is this a full, just diving off the diving board into the narrative and just taking Ty Houston? I am on the high dive, <laughs> and I am doing oh, a poor front water. facing backflip off of that high oh, dive, like a gainer. Yeah, and uh, sure, <laughs> yes. He hit his head on the board on the way down. Oh, no. Because, t uh, yeah, I really am starting. You really him. would. I really genuinely would. I, I don't mind it's picking magical up. magical powers. It, it is. Well, you know, and it's funny, too, because uh, we joke about it. And if you're not in on the joke, we are talking about T.Y. Hilton being T.Y. Houston because every single game he has ever played against 75% of his career yards are against Houston. It's Something like that. Yeah, it, it, he is. Is that a how it feels thing? Yes, okay. a dominator, and we and and we joke about it. We make the jokes, but they know this. They talk about this. They they're not. He was four for eighty against them this year. Yeah, they're not unaware that this is like his special place is a playing against Houston. And is there just some like really? Good he was on the food field he for eats when he goes I don't there, know, man. Yeah. Uh, he sh man, imagine if he signed in Houston and gets half of his games there. Would would that be a resurgence for his career? I don't, but we don't know if it's them or the Houston defense. He had, you know, he had sixty one percent of the snaps, five targets. So he's back. He's active, and he's got the matchup. If I'm looking at a weekly play, I don't know someone else that checks as many boxes because most of the good wide receivers are obviously rostered right now. I mean. If I is out Jackson? there, you chasing Deshaun Jackson's big week? I don't think so. I think you know both Deshaun Jackson and T. Y. Hilton are looking at four or five targets. People want to know if they should be cutting Corey Davis, Cortland Sutton. I'm certainly comfortable for th both of those guys to be cut. I don't think that they're. Yes. I don't think they're in the category of oh man, they're going to help me in the playoffs. Emmanuel Sanders is probably in that category too. Like, probably. he's been absolutely awful. I mean, not kind of awful, like unplayably awful for five consecutive weeks. He gets the Patriots twice coming up here. No, Tampa I, Bay as well. Um, but, I mean, he, he is not getting targets, not enough of them. Yeah, I'd be willing to move on. Like, if I, I'd, I'd flex Dawson Knox over him. Wow. For sure. I don't blame you. Um, so, I think you can. And then Kadarius Tony. people want to know if you cut him. I don't think so. I'd, I do not cut him. Yeah, it just like – yeah, we're we're going back to what seems like ten years ago in terms of football, but he has it. He has the magic that if the right scenario presents itself, Kadarius Tony will be dominant. All right, um, you mentioned T. Y. Hilton. Would you take T. Y. Hilton over Van Jefferson? No, no, no I way. would not. No, there's there's a couple of players out there that are probably not available on your waivers that are you know great pickups. Van Jefferson 
has been 98% of snaps. He's very involved. Without Robert Woods, we saw him have, you know, a, a solid game this last week. Um, I, I loved the question of Van Jefferson or Odell Beckham. I think I lean Odell Beckham. Um, but Van Jefferson is, is involved on a good offense with a good quarterback. And I, I mentioned Brandon Ayuk, who's it's like 85% rostered. But with Debo out, I think that those guys are certainly ahead of the pack. If Debo's out uh, and Juwan Jennings will also step into that wide receiver two role behind Brandon Ayuk, which could be relevant. I mean, if you are missing Debo, you're missing a lot of this offense. You only saw one target for Kittle last week. Juwan uh, Jennings did score. Yeah, it's it's tough for the Juwan Jennings versus Trent Sherfield conversation. Juwan had uh, more snaps and a few more targets this past week, so that's – I mean, I, that, they did come out and say that he would be. Oh, did they? Yeah. The well, the athletic reported he would be the number two in the offense. Okay. Well, then that that should give you some more confidence. Not that you're super stoked about picking up uh, Juwan Jennings to play, but desperate times, man. He should be on the field. Other options: Kendrick Bourne is twenty one percent rostered. MVS thirty six percent with now Randall Cobb being out. He is on the bye week, unfortunately, but MVS has been. It, I mean that's two games in a row of of high target volume. It had it's, it's called uh, the setup, is what it, he calls it. It it absolutely could be. Uh, it it didn't turn into like huge fantasy numbers, only four for fifty, but it was on nine targets. Yeah. Uh, so I he is he's interesting. I have we heard an update on Cobb's status. Okay, and we we probably won't get one then, but. Like a zero dollar just addition to your bench if you are looking for something. Yeah, I, I mean, sure. I don't think I would personally care enough to pick up MVS to hold him through a buy, um, in hopes that you know Cobb and Lazard are still out. I, you know, it's like if he was active this week, sure, I might be able to play him. Um, but two weeks from now, I'm not that confident in starting him. So to pick him up and hold him through a buy, to probably not start him probably is, not good advice well it's just i mean it's all relative right what your options are what your league is like but hopefully there's better options what about nick westbrook akine he's that, also on a bye week yeah so these are players that you could tuck away but you probably need somebody this week so you're looking at ty hilton deshaun jackson plays washington like that is oh, a revenge game good matchup um he only had four targets but I think you saw the impact he can make on the offense. Three for 102, big touchdown. Um, but I think I think Kendrick Bourne belongs near the top of this list if Van Jefferson yeah. is out. I mean, just with how the defense is or the offense is playing. Um, and then spot starts for Jawan Jennings, Russell Gage, if you want to try it. Uh, Russell oh, Gage. Man. Russell Gage. They're is not going to be able to run against Tampa. Absolutely on this list. I mean – if you look back, he's had eight targets, seven targets the last two games. Obviously, we know he can goose at any point. He's It's like his specialty. But if you're talking about a guy who is for sure out there, he's going to play a lot of snaps um, on a team that's going to need to – I mean, in the matchup against Tampa Bay, you're going to need to throw the ball. They're going to be focused on Kyle Pitts, who you know most teams have found success trying to do that and focus – their defense towards Pitts, and that opens things up for, um, you know, he was a he was a wide receiver one this last week. Russell Gage was uh, six for uh, sixty two and a touchdown. So I I think Russell Gage is fine to be picked up and played. It has been the Pitts playing Kyle Pitts. Hey it's five straight weeks of of not being. In, we were talking about it on the show yesterday. <sighs> Do we have a season long update? On oh, Fryermuth has got to be closing in. Who the tight? Who the best rookie is this year at tight end? It's got to be the Muth. I will let us know. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> Running back um, options. People want to know. Can you? Would you cut bait on Jeff Wilson? Completely uninvolved now, but Debo's out. But Wilson wasn't good when he's alone. So there's. I feel like roster spots are a premium right now. So, I have a team with Jeff Wilson. Would you move on for, and maybe we ask it with these guys, but are you moving on? Uh, not in general, unless there is someone better to move on for. He's the best example of the MVS versus Jeff Wilson. This week, Jeff Wilson could 
rise in value. Something could happen, whereas on buy, MVS wouldn't. So roster spots spots are valuable, and that's why I'm pretty much going to have – he's – Wilson is just a an Hand insurance cut. running back. That's, that's all he is, is – a backup, um, but those guys can certainly skyrocket in value. Whereas, you know, a, a wide receiver middling on by um, isn't going to improve your roster next week. Alexander Madison. Well, before we jump into fully into the running back, sorry, I I think he's worth mentioning. Uh, Devontae Parker. Yeah, pay attention to the news. We don't know if he will be back yet, uh, but. Giants this week, if he happens to be back, uh, bye week, Jets, Saints, Tennessee. Like, he's got a good stretch run, and before the the unfortunate back-to-back -back injury situation uh, was involved. Nine targets in week four, then he got hurt. Eleven targets in week eight, then he got hurt. So it's just, he's a name to monitor in a deep league. Oh, update. Oh, on the season, Kyle Pitts and Pat Fryermuth oh. are back-to-back. -back. <laughs> The tight end 10 and 11 with Kyle Pitts having a small lead of six fantasy points. Yeah, I mean, I know where I'd go rest of the season <laughs> right now. You'd Is go it, get loose? Them? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, All I mean, right. things, okay. have, things have bounced that way where, you know, Kyle Pitts lost Calvin Ridley over the top. Pat Fryermuth lost Eric Ebron as competition. Um, it's It's been... You got a taste of what Pitts could do, mm -hmm. but this offense—I mean, my goodness! If if Cordero wasn't there, it would be like it would be an actual offense to watch it. I who's mean, who's been better the last three weeks, Russell Wilson or Big Ben? I'm guessing you're going to say Big oh, that's Ben. That's got to be Ben. I have no idea. Oh, I mean, this, who cares? The, yeah, the, the answer is who cares? They suck. All right, back to running backs. Alexander Madison has Detroit this week. He would be the yes, the must-have pickup far above Chuba um, because there are oh, complicating yeah. m matters in play with Carolina. But Madison has Detroit, Pittsburgh, Chicago. Spend it all. Spend yeah. everything you got. Yes, Madison is a priority burn. He is a full fab dump at this point. Serious load of fab. Yes. Uh, Chuba Hubbard and Amir Abdullah. Those are the names to bring up, and I will be honest with you. They're both – you should pursue them both. Yes, I agree. And But Amir may have sneaky value. Like, if I'm prioritizing them, it probably is, is Chuba by a very thin margin. But Amir Abdullah's rise in this offense should not be ignored. The last five weeks he has turned into their receiving back. We know when, uh, when Christian McCaffrey was out, you're talking about – He's essentially averaging five targets a game. It, when when Christian McCaffrey is not on the field, those are high value. Uh, Cam is not afraid to check it down to the running back. Last week, 49% of snaps for Abdullah, 20% for Chuba. Could yes. have just been a product of the way that the depth chart shook out with CMC being active, but the team has started to build a trust with him, and it makes it complicated to spend big fab on one guy here. Yeah, it, it, it does. I still would firmly be in the Chuba camp over Abdullah. However, um, like you said, there's a, there's a lot of things that complicate. It's not just Abdullah. We talked about how bad the upcoming schedule was for Christian McCaffrey, but it didn't matter because it was Christian McCaffrey. Right. Well, Chuba Hubbard is not Christian McCaffrey. They are on by right now, so you're picking up a guy you certainly can't use. Come back against Atlanta, okay. Now I've got a good weekly flex. From That's that, what it is. From that point on, Buffalo, uh, Tampa Bay, uh, the Saints, uh, yeah. that's the rest. That's that's what you're getting. You're getting a backup sharing time with Abdullah in a terrible schedule um, after he gets back from by. So there are other – like Pre Sony Michelle. Sony Michelle is a, is someone I'm, I would probably rather invest there than on Chuba – because I feel like I'm going to get a good game right now when I need it. Chuba without Abdullah, his highest fantasy finish was 19. Right. That's the best he did without him. With and now massive you have, volume. Yeah, and now you have a quarterback that is going to compete for end zone t you know, opportunities. It does seem a little bit like just be careful on what you think he is if you pick him up. Sure. Um, but, yeah, Jason is right. Sony Michelle is another – 
priority ad this week. He gets the uh, gets Jacksonville. We just don't know. We, we had the news come out that Daryl Henderson has a uh, quad quad strength. injury, and it from you know we we talking with uh, uh, Matthew Betts, our injury guy. He said he would be pretty surprised if Daryl Henderson's able to play this weekend if the injury is uh, exactly what they're talking about, which Sony becomes a, a great play over this weekend. And then he should be – Sony should be on rosters regardless. You're at the time of the year where if Henderson unfortunately misses more time, then Sony Michelle going into the fantasy playoffs is a, is a fantastic play. Let's d discuss the – I use it in quotes, the running back situation in Buffalo. Yeah. But Matt Breida and Devin Singletary were the only two active running backs this past week. We had talked about it on the show before the weekend that Zach Moss might be an inactive. He was. Singletary saw 66% of snaps. Breida was very effective. Nine for 26 on the ground, two for 29 and a touchdown through the air. We've seen this for a couple of weeks in a row now with Matt Breida. The team has been very vocal about him earning snaps. Which of these two running backs would you prioritize? Are you prioritizing snap count or effectiveness in this offense? Well, you also have to, like, going back to the game, uh, there was a particular play where there was a screen called, and Matt Burita and a couple other players, to be fair, went one way. Josh Allen and some linemen went the other way. And as soon as that play happened uh, – yeah, there was the miscommunication. Matt Burita essentially got benched for quite a while. He did come back in, and that's when he had the receiving touchdown. So I'm not sure how much that will factor into uh, the decision-making of, of the Buffalo coaching staff. I would probably prioritize Singletary, uh, but that, that's not with a huge amount of confidence. And on top of that, there's no guarantee that Zach Moss will again be a healthy scratch. That could have been a very specific plan for that particular matchup. Uh, so, so we're only we're moving forward with reactionary news of last week. So these guys do need to be picked up and and stashed. Matt Burita is far more available in your fantasy leagues. Like Singletary is available in you know thirty five percent of them, and Matt Burita is still a, a decent ad at yeah, this point. Yeah, Burita could be picked up as a as a passing downs guy because he's available in your leagues. But I I would much rather have Singletary. Uh, the ef the effectiveness and the efficiency of Burita having touchdowns lately has has really vaulted his fantasy finishes up. But I'm gonna I'm gonna rely on the snaps, the uh, total opportunities, and those are going heavily towards Singletary. However, this is still a split backfield of a team that doesn't run the ball well, with an upcoming schedule of the new the New England Patriots, the Buccaneers, and the Panthers. So I'm not excited about any of them Jamal Williams you heard it earlier he may get the start and he's only 37 percent rostered do you put him right behind Madison on your priorities if you need to start this week? yeah for this week absolutely against Minnesota or do you have Michelle ahead of him? I have Michelle ahead of him. I would take Jamal see I I have more confidence that that you're not going to see Swift than I do that you're not going to see Henderson. I agree. And you have to make a decision now, so I will actually go Williams then, Michelle. Yeah, I, mean, I, I agree with what you're saying, that um, J Jamal Williams has no chance that he comes out and you know is a goose and is not really involved, whereas there's still a chance Sonny Michelle is just the backup who touches the ball twice um, for Daryl Henderson. But I do think that the upside of uh, Sonny Michelle being by himself against Jacksonville is, is humongous. Boston Scott is another pickup. Potentially has the Jets. Oh, baby. He's looked good. I mean, just watching the games, he's looked good. He he is a shifty uh he reminded me of of like Darren Sproles. Just sure. He could still pummel you at the end of a run, even though he's got a smaller demeanor. Or uh <laughs> demeanor's not the word I'm looking for there. St uh, body? Body. There you go. <laughs> sure. Fifteen for sixty four and a touchdown last week. Yeah, it's it will come down to Miles Sanders. We did get an update from Coach Sirianni saying that Miles, uh, oh, and Jordan Howard are heading in the right direction. I'd be more confident in Miles Sanders playing, but if Jordan Howard is in fact back, oh, that would suck. <laughs> I mean, good for Jordan Howard, but like this is a monster matchup that if 
if those guys are out, Boston Scott will be an incredible play against the Jets. If Miles is back, he should be an incredible play. If Jordan Howard's there, it's just messy. Dontrell Hilliard, Deonta he, Foreman. Yes, they're this one is fascinating. Uh because the running back for the Titans, they took over. They're on the bye week. They did some serious damage against the Patriots, which was not really expected. A lot of Hilliard's rushing yards was one play. But what Deont- are the, Let's give the stat lines there. Yes, please Deontay do. Foreman, 19 for 109. Uh, Hilliard was 12 for 131 and 1. Yeah, and so both of these guys are an option. They get Jacksonville coming out of the bye week, but you have uh, Jeremy McNichols, who – was he was in line to to get the work after the injury to Derrick Henry? They of course brought Adrian Peterson in, but then McNichols suffered a concussion a couple weeks back. With concussion timelines, with normal uh, recovery, he should be back. But these guys are worth speculation ads. Like Hilliard's worth a speculation ad to me at the back of a at the back of your bench, just in case McNichols has further troubles. And Foreman should be added. Because he will be the primary ball carrier, and he looks like he has juice. Yeah, Foreman's not going anywhere. Looks good. Will be the guy. I think McNichols comes in and overtakes Hilliard. Okay, when they get back off their bye. Hilliard did everything he could in two games he to did. show them that it, that absolutely he can be a player, one hundred percent. But we've just seen it with you know, uh, Khalil like Herber, Dearness Johnson. Dearness Johnson. They come in and they're great. And obviously, but Jeremy McNichols is no David Montgomery. How or, dare you? I mean, <laughs> McNichols looked pretty McBad in, oh. his, in his games before the concussion. He was doing nothing. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what it means for Hilliard moving forward, but I agree. Foreman is the pickup. Yeah. And has Jacksonville coming off the bye. Um, and it's good to see for him. I mean, this is a player with a lot of potential coming into the league. And then you got to talk about yes, the, you do. The, the Jets. I mean, Tevin Coleman. Tevin Coleman. 16 carries. I mean, I, <laughs> I attribute a lot of what they did with the matchup, right? It's, yes. It's – not often you get the chance to give Tevin Coleman 16 carries, and then Austin Walter had nine carries for 38 and a touchdown. Um, yes, Austin Walter. That's right. Where we said, huh? So, oh, no, he was fully featured on Sunday Live. Just don't. Oh, that's good. Just don't check. Don't check the tape. Um, check the tape. Yeah, my my uh, my Ty Johnson uh, DraftKings lineup it didn't do as well. Yeah. So yeah, because Austin Walter. Let's uh, let's blitz the tight ends because it's not pretty. Um, Zach Ertz, I threw him in here because if for some reason, you know, he was just on the bye, 80% rostered on sleeper, lower on, on ESPN from what we could tell. If he's there for some reason, you have to pick him up. Even if you have a great tight end, pick up Zach Ertz. Yeah. I mean, I I thought I had a great one was Kyle Pitts. Now I'm deciding. You do have a great one with Zach Zach Ertz. Ertz. Yeah. Logan Thomas, 66% rostered. Um, we just talked about how he, he basically scored, didn't count, and then uh, might give you the chance to pick him up on the cheap. He could be a great end-of-year tight end for your team. Mm-hmm. Las Vegas, Dallas, Philly coming up. Those are the two big names that should be focused on. Everybody else is junk. Yeah. And no offense to them as people. We're just talking about for your fantasy lineup, you are basically filling a spot with a name. That is what it equates to. Cole Komet is – a a junk it would be the tight tight end in the junk drawer that if I had to find one I would pick him up. Um, he was eight for sixty five two games ago. He was six for eighty seven. He's very involved. Stupid Jimmy Graham gets the touchdown. <laughs> oh baby, yeah, you can dance on me. I know. I um... our great bet of Will Disley versus Jimmy Graham. Take it away. You went with the music. I thought you would go with the money drop. I did get some money. I could do that too. I mean, we could. I did pay up. I paid. I paid the man. I got a uh, Venmo or a, an Apple Pay that said <laughs> Jimmy Grandpa and a hundred dollars hit me, and um, That's fun. yeah, I can't believe that happened. I was considering like if Disley had found a way last night of calling it neutral. Oh, you know, it same would just, weekend. Maybe we just keep the push it longer, right. but double the. You bat. would let him do that. He, I mean, he had a you had a bye week. Unlike. Jason in bets. I am a you know a sporting man. If Will Disley caught one while your player was on by, I would have taken the yes, under. I know you would have. <laughs> uh, there are a couple other names that I think are worth bringing up. Uh, Foster Moreau from the Las Vegas Raiders. If Darren Waller misses time 
Foster Moreau would go right into a tight end led offense and going to the island, I, right. the island of Doctor Moreau. There's a lot of doctors on this show, uh, but the last time Waller was out, Moreau was heavily featured because uh, that's just how the the thing the the plays are drawn up. And uh, Gerald Everett, man, you it has to be mentioned that. Since the bye week, he has seen 22% of the targets, and maybe that's a product of Russ not confident that he can get the ball down the field, but he is seeing a lot of targets and in not doing a ton, but in a PPR situation, Gerald Everett is in play. Defenses, two that we recommended last week as a stash are the two best pickups this week, the Colts against Houston and the Vikings against Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, Arizona also plays Chicago. That's going to be an opportunity for um, an opportunistic defense to take advantage of a rookie quarterback if Justin Fields is back. Yeah, and even if it's Andy Dalton, I'm still going to play the Arizona Cardinals, and they are a two out of three because the following week, following week the Cardinals will play the Rams. It's at home, too. You, you, you could probably do it, but then the next week is Detroit. So the Cardinals – should be looked at and added. Two or three for the Cowboys as well. They got New Orleans this week who's struggling on offense and then the Giants in two weeks. Two of three for the Dolphins who are widely available. They're the playing Dolphins great. are man. Their wow. defense is great. They're playing against the Giants, then a bye week, then the Jets. So uh, I, I think they are a, a fine pickup. And if you have a D already for this week, but you need one for next week, Denver plays Detroit in two weeks. Green Bay plays Chicago in two weeks. The Seahawks are uh, facing Houston in two weeks. The Saints are facing the Jets in two weeks. That's a great one. Yeah, that's the one I'd go with. And then the Titans are facing Jacksonville in two weeks. So there's your opportunity for um, – It sounds like a game the Titans will lose. Jacksonville? Yeah. Divisional? Yeah. They, they just – they like to lose against bad teams. That's it's their one of their favorite things to do. <laughs> Full stream ahead. Um, I did just get some breaking news oh. from Tom Pelissero. Amari Cooper was required to miss two games because of the 10 day isolation period as an unvaccinated player now is at risk of missing a third due to ongoing symptoms. Ooh, not good. so, uh, red alert. Yeah, that sucks on the potential for Cooper's return. And hopefully he just heals up. I don't know if you guys saw the, uh, comments from Joel Embiid recently. But Joel Embiid came back from – he was out with COVID symptoms, and it hit him really, really hard. Mm. And he was saying, like, he had some bad days. Yeah, I mean, for a wide receiver, if you, 10 days later you're still dealing with symptoms, when he is clear of it, there very well could be, you know, issues of performance in the first game back. All right, streaming quarterback options. Let's go with a guy who looked really, really good last week. Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz uh, has the the utter privilege of throwing to T.Y. Houston this week. Mm -hmm. Texans are bad at football. Running, running mission control. Yeah, okay. No, I'm with you. Um, allows uh, – the Texans are allowing first downs on 39% of passing attempts. Now, the problem here is that when – we've seen this. When, when, when Jonathan Taylor can get slowed a little bit, then Carson Wentz has been really, really good. Don't think he's going to be slowed by the Texans, but look, if you're going to – He'll do enough. If you're going to score 31 points against the Texans, 30, 35 points, Carson Wentz is going to play a role. And so I think he is a great streaming candidate. Yeah, I, I like him. I like Mike's uh, better than mine as well. But I'll I'll throw Tua out there. Tua's been playing good football. He has. Um, this last week wasn't great for fantasy, but that's because the actual game, he was very unneeded as they whooped up on the Carolina Panthers. Their defense was great. Um, Gaskin also took two rushing touchdowns. Gaskin had the two rushing touchdowns. I mean, Tua was – he had an 87% completion percentage. He's completed more than 80% his last two weeks. Jalen Waddle's the real deal, and he could get Devontae Parker back. The Giants aren't a bad defense, but they're not, you know, a world beater. I, I think I'm just looking at who's available. There, It's not a great week for streamers. I'm going to go with someone who's been playing good football, and that's Tua. And it, we, you might be wondering why we haven't talked about him. We're just saving it for here. Taysom Hill for the New Orleans Saints needs to be picked up. As a starter last year in his four games, averaged over 50 rushing yards a contest. He was a top 12 quarterback in six-point scoring formats. He's solid for fantasy. 
yeah, he, he's not surrounded by elite weapons, but uh, Alvin Kamara should be back. And just the rushing upside puts him in the conversation of a weekly top 12 start. And if he plays well against Dallas and with the contract, he will probably be given the opportunity to finish out the year and see if he is the future of the quarterback position for the Saints, and he'll be good for fantasy. All right, that is it for our streaming quarterbacks. We want to thank Traeger Grills, of course. Uh, grilling season never ends with Traeger. Um, you can keep that wood-fired flavor coming all year long. We have been outside a ton here. The weather has been so good. And um, can I talk about the brisket anymore? Yeah, oh, please do. I wish I could have. Did you save any brisket? I, I ate it. So no, um, rude. <laughs> um, but what it was awesome because w when you slow cook, you know when you smoke a brisket, that's hours, and you can monitor it all from your phone. The temperature uh, overnight, it was awesome. It yeah. was it was really a good experience, and it worked out and it was delicious. I am not a barbecue pro. This was in fact my first time doing a brisket, and I was like, man, this seems like this seems like a lot, and it was not. It no. was it was in fact just a couple simple steps and you get it you get it on the trigger and then you just say, Trigger, smoke this for me. Yes. I, smoke that food. You can talk to it. It is allowed. Oh yeah. Make yeah. it a wood fired wood. You get to name your, your grill. You do. Yeah, yeah. I got Sir Smokes a lot. Oh, did you go <laughs> Okay. Make it a wood fired winner with Traeger. Go to Traeger.com slash footballers. That'll do it for today's show. We appreciate each and every one of you tuning in supporting us you can follow us on twitter at the ff ballers and the community of wonderful people is jointhefoot.com goodbye thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ff ballers Today's episode was brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Visit omahasteaks.com and get eight Omaha Steaks burgers free with your order of the perfect gift package. Use the keyword footballers. That's omahasteaks.com keyword footballers.